We're going verse by verse through a book of the Bible. So open your Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. The cool thing about going verse by verse, it always happens this way, is that whenever we're dealing with something in our lives, in the church, in the world, we seem to be in a text that deals with it. And that's what we're looking at today, is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, just picking up where we left off last time, verse by verse through the book of 1 Timothy. And... Uh, we need to pray again. Mm. God, you're so good to us. Oh, Lord, we just, we come away from a very confusing time in our worlds. A time that we're not so certain of what's going to come next. But Lord, we do know this of your consistency and your love and your mercy, Lord, and your word that continues to encourage us. Lord, how we love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. And thank you for your presence even now. Lord, open your word to us. Help us to hear your voice, what you want to say to us through your word. You're faithful, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, come on, say it out loud in your living room. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. All right, 1 Timothy 4. Now, here's one thing before we get to the text. Understand this, is that we need to stay consistent. We need to stay consistent. We need to stay consistent in prayer and fellowship as the Lord allows you to fellowship with those around you and, and, uh, and those in your neighborhood, those in your family. I tell you why, guys, your, your kids grow up so fast. Use this time. Moms, dads, use this time to, to, to pour into your kids, to spend time with your kids. And uh, we need to spend time in the Word. We need that consistency back to the Word, back to feeding our souls in the things of God. So we're not going to divert, except we're going to talk about end times, and is this the end of the world, and are we all going to, uh, you know, um, well, I'll be nice. Is this, is this the end? We're going to talk about that, because that's where we're at in our text. But the thing is this, is that we need to spend time in the Word. Um, I sent you a email. If you are part of the church here, you can go to Facebook and see that, that email that I sent out. And it gave you some helpful hints on how to study the word, where you can get prayer. If you need prayer, there is, as I already mentioned, there is a website that we have that you can go over there and pray and fellowship, how to stay in fellowship. Again, go to my Facebook site, go to the church Facebook site, and you'll see that there. And then in the word, let me, a little commercial break before I get to the message, is this, is in the Word, Monday through Saturday, every morning at 7.30, we're doing this live, I'm teaching right now through the book of Matthew, so you don't want to miss that. And then on Wednesday night, now I just, I'm going to, I'm going to contradict myself right now, is this, is that I said we need to be consistent, and yes, we do, we need to be consistent. However, on Wednesday night, I've been teaching the book of Joshua, I'm going to pause that study right now. This is something I want to do. I want to pause this study right now. We'll come back to Joshua. You Joshua fans, you know, that's a great book. We've had a blast with it. We're about halfway through. And I don't think I've ever done this in the history of, of Christendom. Have I ever done this? However, I'm going to teach, starting teaching this Wednesday night, the book of Revelation. We need to be in the Word of God. What does the Bible say about end times? And let me tell you this, this is not going to freak you out as bad as you think it is. It's going through the book of Revelation. It's going to give you hope. In fact, it's the only book that we have in the Bible that gives a blessing to those that hear and those that heed. And we'll talk about that in the book of Revelation. So Wednesday night, 1 Timothy 4, it says this. It says, Now the Spirit expressively, boldly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Uh, through the insincerity of, of liars whose conscience are seared, who, prefer, who, prefer, who forbid marriage and acquire abstinence from food and all this stuff. Now, we're going to take, literally going to have to take two weeks looking at this because this really hits on where we're at today. He says this, he says, now the Spirit boldly says that in the latter times, in the last, I love that word times there, it has the idea of seasons. In the last seasons, in the seasons, this is what we're going to be seeing. Now, now again, it says now, some of your translations will say the word but there, however, comma, so it makes you go, makes you back up and look at what he just said. He was given, this is the doctrine of the church. This is what we believe. This is what's happening. He says, 
Look at chapter 3, look at verse 16. He says, great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. The mystery, this is a great doctrine that we're looking at. And this is the mystery. Uh, he was manifested in the flesh, speaking of Jesus. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. However, comma, this is what the Spirit would boldly say, there's going to be those that don't believe in that. There's going to be lo- those that go, go down that road. Listen, is there is, there is a, it's like a railroad track. There's two tracks going on. One of them is, is what's going on in the world, what's going on in all the, all the things that we're seeing, all the end times things. Are we in the last days? Yes. Stay tuned. We'll talk about that. But here, all these things going on. But there's also the other track that's going on with God's faithfulness and his love and his mercy and he's reaching people. Remember last time we were in Matthew chapter 24. I spent just a moment over there. What he says, there's going to be earthquakes and there's going to be famines and there's going to be pestilence contagious epidemic diseases. There, all those things are going to take place. But while that's going on, do you remember last week? While that's going on, what else is going on? The gospel of the kingdom is being preached. The gospel of the kingdom is going out. Praise God for that. So where do we focus on? Where should be our focus? Should it be on, oh, look at this, it's terrible. We in Utah have not had an earthquake like that in my lifetime that I remember. Some of you maybe years ago, I think in the 90s, they had something similar to that. But, uh, but you know, I, I grew up in California. We had lots of earthquakes. So it, didn't, it, was, it was like, whoa, this was like my childhood, I remember. But that was a trip. Wasn't that a trip? The earthquakes. But did you know if you look at the apps that are out there on earthquakes, that are, and this is not to freak you out. This is to lift up your eyes because your redemption is drawing near. Is The Bible says that there is going to be increase in earthquakes. Are there? Yes. Get one of those apps on earthquakes. There's earthquakes happening all the time. All the time. Okay. (laughs) Freaked you out there for a minute, didn't you? Okay, so these these earthquakes. But here's the point is this, is that there's going to be stuff going on. And this is just, in this world, you'll have tribulation, Jesus said, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. There's going to be trials. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be the, the things that the world doesn't understand. And yet we as a child of God are looking at what God's doing. God is moving. God is bringing peace. Here's the thing though, you have to run to him and not run to MSNBC or Fox News. That doesn't help you. When you run to those things, you're feeding that part in you that's 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 hindering who you are as a child of God. Yeah, you need to know what's going on. I agree with all that. But to, to be absorbed in that stuff, be absorbed in Jesus. Be absorbed, absorbed in his word of God. Be in the fellowship where you can, there's so many Bible studies online right now. Every church has gone online. Now you can compare the various Church of services, and you will know, you will appreciate, if you go to another church you're, and you watch this one, you're going to appreciate your pastor, right? You go, wow, that pastor is weird. I'm glad I got that, that Baptist pastor, right? So now the, the Spirit expressly says that in the last times, the last times, the last days, this is something that he's going to say and really highlight in the next book that he writes to Timothy. Take it right in your Bible. Go to 2 Timothy real quick. He says something very similar. He says, verse chapter 3, he says, but understand this, that in the last days, in the last days, he said, there will come times of difficulty, ESV here. I like the, um, the New King James. He said, in the last days, perilous times will come. The word is a unique word. It really means it's, it's a time where there's feeling like there's no way out. Boy, that's what's going on today, huh? A feeling like there's no way out. In the last days, there's going to be a feeling of no way out. For people will be, notice this, will be lovers of themselves. They'll be lovers of themselves. They'll be every man for himself. They'll be taking care of themselves. They'll be lovers of themselves. You see that. Why would you ever need that much toilet paper, ever? Why would you need that much hand sanitizer? You don't need that. If you need that much, should I say this on there? If you need this much toilet paper, you should have saw the doctor before now, right? You don't need that much toilet paper. That's crazy stuff, right? The love of money. And I don't need to go, I'm going to spend a lot of time in this in like three years when we get to it, because uh, 2 Timothy is the next book that we'll be teaching. But uh, on Sunday morning, he says, be lovers of money, be, be lovers of money. 
Money's not going to save you. Money is, money is, is not going to, is not going to fill that void in your heart. Uh, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, un, unpleasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not, not loving good, treacherous, and reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure, rather lovers of God, having their appearance, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people, the Bible says. That's the end times. That's what the world looks like. That's what the world looks like. Christian, that's not what you look like. That's not who we are. That's not where we are to operate in those places of fear, in those places of of exactly what it says. I'm a lover of myself. It's all about me. No, it's all about you being a child of God, reaching out to your neighbors. I've had some great conversation with our neighbors. I've had some great conversations with those that, that would not necessarily watch something like this online or the neighbors are wanting to know about Jesus. But here's the thing is that, is that lovers of, your, of money are proud. All this stuff, that's not who you are. All right, so this stuff that's going on, let me shift gears here. Is this the last days? As he's talking about here, the book of Daniel talks about it. The book of Revelation talks about it. Is this the last days? Absolutely, this is the last days. Define that. Because you've got to understand how this thing works. This is how it works. The last days began, began all the way when Jesus ascended into heaven. All those days, that was the, that's when the last days began. You've got to understand how this works. In 1 John, uh, the apostle John said, he said, children, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, now many Antichrists has come, the spirit of Antichrist. If you don't know about the Antichrist, see you Wednesday night. We'll talk about the Antichrist as we go through the book of Revelation. But many Antichrists have come, therefore we know that it is the last hour. Did John believe this was the hour that Jesus is coming back? Maybe, but here's the thing. The end times began back in the early church. And then it's run all the way out to today. Well, how does that work? Then this is a long last days. It, how can you say they're last days if they're not, if they're gonna, they're gonna span that length of time? Well, it's like the Bible would, which gives us imagery in our head. The Bible would give us the idea of birth pains. We saw it in, in Matthew chapter 24 last week. It says, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be, there'll be famines and earthquakes and pestilence and, and earthquakes in various places. All these things, listen, all these things are the beginnings of birth pains. Let me show you another place that that is. Turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. Take a left in your Bible, go to 1 Thessalonians. In fact, I want to spend a little time here. This is good stuff. Now concerning the times, verse chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, now concerning the times and season, brothers, I have no, I have no need that, to have anything written to you. For yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He says, while people are saying, uh, while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As here it is, as labor pains upon them, uh, upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, child of God, you are not in darkness, brothers, for the day, for that day to surprise you like a thief. And we'll, we'll read through that. It's it, so so backing up and look at this, and then we'll zero down on it. Is this? It is birth pains. So back in the early church, how this thing started, back in the early church was the conception. It was the beginning. It was the beginning in the book of Revelation that, or excuse me, the book, of the, book, the book of Acts. It was in that era that they realized there's a pregnancy. There's an excitement. There's a new thing coming. And we know Jesus is coming back. And boy, we're excited about that. And they had, as you women know, they had morning sicknesses. They had difficulties. It wasn't always good, but there was always this excitement as been in the church all along. There has been this excitement. The Lord's coming back and it's been birth pains. There's been birth pains. There's been, a, there's been first of all, uh, and you guys know this better than me. I praise God I'm a man. All right, so you women, now listen, you got pregnant. 
Everything was good. You had the morning sicknesses. I know I watched my wife go through this. And you had the morning sickness and all that. But it was actually pretty good. You know, you're, you're, you're out there with all this big old gut, you know, and you're out there going and it's like, whatever. I don't have much sympathy for you. You know how I live. Now you know how I feel all the time, all right? Feel this big old gut out there. And, and you can feel the baby moving and there's an excitement that's there and all that. But when you get close to the end is when, is when the contractions start, is when the birth pains start. And I remember, remember this uh, uh, is the Braxton, Bra- was it Braxton Hicks or something? Was that the name? Something like that. You women know this stuff. All right. So, so those would happen, you know, and some were little false, the little false moments. And we had those back in the 60s and the 70s. Here's the, here's the thing that opens our eyes is that you look at like the, um, like with earthquakes, Look what happened about 1960, about 1970. Before that, we always had normal, you know, normal earthquakes, so many per year, so many magnitude. But about the 1960s and 1970s, they started to escalate to every year starting to double and triple the magnitude and how many earthquakes. You know what that is? That's birth pains. And we're seeing birth pains right now. Right now with this epidemic, this is a birth pain. This is a birth pain. Is it the end of the world? Yeah, at some point. Let me say something that's pretty radical right now. Jesus Christ is coming back, and we're closer right now in the history of mankind for his second coming. Right now, right this second, we're the closest we've ever been in the history of mankind to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Right now, we're the closest we've ever been to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. We need to be people that are excited about his coming. And yet, as we'll see if I shut up and we start read, read a little bit more here, is that we need to have a sober mind in this on how we're dealing with stuff because people are hungry for some kind of answer. They're looking for something to fill that void. And to, how, do you, how do you deal with this fear? You, you, it either goes off the scale and you freak out or you medicate it, or you can run to Jesus. But he says here, going back to these birth pains. Now, um, and then there was, let me just say this, but they don't finish, they don't go back here. Is this, is that the, with the birth pains now, is this, there was a joyous time when that baby was born. And I remember that. My wife, man, she was in that delivery room and, and, uh, she was in there, first, first baby too. She was, she was, there's no, she wanted no medication at all. She wanted nothing to numb the pain. I wanted some, hey, can I have that drug? I need to numb some pain. I'm having a hard time here, you know? And so she's, she, the baby's coming and she is, I don't, she's, she's not here. So I can say this, she's watching online. I love you a lot. But here's the thing is she was yelling. She was yelling, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Because it looked like it hurt. I tell you what, at that moment, from, this, from that moment to this day, I thank God that I was born a man. Because I don't know the guys can handle that kind of pain. You women are like created by God to be able to handle that pain. I don't know, you just do that. Us guys, uh-uh, that's not us. But uh, all right, so, so, but when that baby was born, now here's the thing, Christian, listen, we're waiting for that birth. What is the birth? Is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back. And these birth pains that we're seeing as the earthquakes, as the pestilence, he said, epidemic diseases, these things happening are exactly what he said to look for. Should we be in fear or should we walk in faith? Should we be people that are just freaking out and absorbing nothing but news and and all the fear of the world? Yes, you ought to have your, you, you ought to know what's going on, but you don't need to absorb that stuff. We need to be absorbing. I told my wife it has it the best. Turn the television off and plant a garden. And that's what she's doing now. Big, massive garden. Turn your television off and plant a garden. So he says this. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, let's walk through this. First Thessalonians 5. He says, I have no need, I have no need to have anything written to you. In other words, you're a believer. When I'm writing to you, I don't really need to do this because you know this is true. What I'm saying to you, most of you guys, Christians, you know this stuff. You know what you need to do. You know that Jesus has talked about what's going to happen at the end of time. You know those things are true. So I don't need to write to you. I like what C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis said, Christians don't need to be taught as often as we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded of these things. So he's saying to those in Thessalonica, he's saying, look, I don't need to write these things to you. You yourself know full aware. You know full aware that what? The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Exactly like Jesus said. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 that those exact kind of terminology, that he's going to come like a thief in the night. He also says that it's going to be like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, they were marrying and giving him marriage or just going about their business until the rain started. There was this kooky guy that was building this ship. Did you know this, that it never rained up to that point? And he's talking about raining. Up to that point, when, when Noah was building the ship, it never rained at that point. He's talking about a deluge. He's talking about a rain. He's talking, God's going to flood the world. They go, oh, look at the crazy guy. And all the, then all the animals start coming. He's like, look, he's doing a zoo. This is weird. And the Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. He was preaching the word. He was telling them, you got to get on the ark. Get on the ark. But there was a day, a sad day that came that God, listen, it said, God shut the door on the ark. Get in there. They're all sitting around the table. The door's still open. The, and all the, you hear all the, the sounds of the animals and it's starting to like have a little bit of animal smells. And they're there at the table. Dad, dad, tell us once again, it is going to rain, right? People are out there laughing at them and all that. And all of a sudden, the supernatural power of God came and shut the door on the ark. And it began to rain. Once that door was shut, that was it. That was it. There was no, you couldn't hold on to that thing. It was done. The door is wide open now. That's where the unicorns come in, by the way. They're outside playing and they didn't get in and that's why we don't have unicorns today. I made that up, all right? Okay, check it out. All right, so here's the thing though, is that once the door is shut, the door's shut. Right now, the door's wide open. Right now, you need to be, listen to this, this is really good. You need to be in Jesus. You need to be a child of God because there's a day coming and the Bible speaks about it. There's a day coming that their door will be shut. Mm, Book of Revelation is going to be pretty heavy in this. And I'll be coming back to these type of, type of thoughts. But today's the acceptable day of salvation. Today's the day that we need to know Christ. If you don't know him, today's the day. Christian, if you're not, if you're not walking with God, walk with him. He's, 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 he wants to be there for you. It's those two tracks. Which one are you going to focus on? The one that's got all the, oh, it's all terrible. Oh, it's or, or the one where God is moving. God is faithful. God is wanting to use you. Hear this well. God wants to use you to be a light in your community, to be one in your community that is, is reaching out. So he says here, again, I don't need to write to you. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Matthew 24, same thing Jesus said. While people are saying, listen to this, peace and safety, peace and security. That's what we need. That's what we got. I got guns. I got ammo. I got toilet paper. I'm ready. Bring the zombie apocalypse. You know, when they're saying peace and security, and that's, everybody's talking about that right now. And is that the fulfillment of this passage? No, I don't believe that in the, in the, in the bigger sense. I believe this is a birth pain. I absolutely believe this is a birth pain right now. And I believe it'll subside and there'll be another one after that. And that'll subside and there'll be another one after that. Right? While they're saying peace and safety, this sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. That's what's going on. But you, child of God, but you, you are not in darkness, brothers, sisters, family member. You are not in darkness. For the day, uh, for, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. Okay, you, the Holy Spirit's helping you see clearly what's going on. If you'll just open your eyes to see his faithfulness, to see the faith that he's given you and not to run to the fear. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, so that's who you are. So then what are we to be doing? So then let us not sleep as others do. Don't just go to la la land. Don't just be asleep in the sense of uh, that you're just totally disconnected with the things of God. You're watching, you're watching all the news and you're making sure you got all your stuff stocked up. And it's just, you know, and you're praying, your prayers are, Lord, bless me and my kids and my wife, us four and no more, you know. And so it just becomes your little collective thing. No, don't sleep as others do, but let us keep awake. Be sober. Those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, you're not part of the night, you're part of the day, let us, this is a really cool word right here, let us be sober. 
having put on the breastplate of faith. Now, help us be sober. Now, I looked at that. First time reading that, I just thought, okay, so let us be sober. Don't be somebody that's just, okay, I'm going to drink this thing away. I'm going to, I'm going to, now it's, uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the oils, you know, the, uh, what are they called? The CBD oils. I'm going to do the CBD oils, all right? My dog's on CBD oil for a little while because he had some really bad pains and he was on CBD oil and uh, it, was, it was really cool to watch him. He liked it. He laid on his side and I did not know his little paw would do that because he looked up and he did a peace sign. Peace, dude. That was totally cool. I love that. My dog was on CBD oil. Oh. Uh, and as a child of God. Now, if you're on that and you need that, that's fine. If you're on that and you don't need that, stay off of it. Right? You don't need to be doing that. That's not the word here, by the way. All right? So I go on that whole, whole thing. That's not the direction. It says, be sober. If you look up that word sober, it means this. It means to be disciplined in your mind. That is powerful right there. Don't be like the world that's all just caught up in this stuff. No, be disciplined in your mind. Lord, I'm going to need help with that. I don't know how I can be disciplined in my, my mind. What does the Bible say? It talks about the Word of God, the washing of the water by the Word of God. That's how we, 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 we stabilize our mind in these things. In fact, there's something else here that he says in that, in that whole mindset. He says, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope for salvation. Okay, but I'll, I'll, let, me, let me do this in, in the, the opposite order here because I was talking about this, our mind here. He says the helmet of hope for salvation. The helmet is going to cover your mind. What's covering your mind is, number one, is hope. Hope. Listen to this. Confident expectation of future good. I love that definition, by the way, of the, of the word hope. Confident expectation. I'm, confident, I'm confidently expecting future good. I believe that God is faithful. I believe that he's just. I believe he's got this in his hands. And no matter what comes, comes at us, God is faithful and I can trust in him. If you're a Facebook friend of mine, you saw where I, the picture that I put on of Nacho Libre. He's out there with his cape on there and it's just, okay, bring this. I'm ready for whatever comes. And Lord, help us to have that. Now that's a little weird. I get that. Some of you are like going over, what did he put on there? Go to the Facebook site there. Okay. So but no, here's the thing, is that, again, it's faith, not fear. It's trusting in God, even when it's hard. This is nothing compared to what the early church went through. The early church went through massacre of Christians. Guys, this is really, this is really uh, uh, I don't know if I want to say it's not as bad, but it was bad during our, our grandparents' age during World War II where all the young people were, were taken over, over in Europe and, and, and many of them didn't come back. The, think of the families there and the things they had to deal with. This is our generation dealing with, with this kind of thing, the uncertainty of this. But every step in every single generation, there is Jesus is working and there's faith. And the Bible says this helmet of salvation, this helmet of hope of salvation is that I have this helmet. This is what covers my mind is the hope. I'm going to trust in God. It's not la-la land. It's I'm going to trust in you. This is what my mind is set on. I'm set on things above. And this is what I put my mind on, the hope, confident expectation of future good. Of what? Of salvation. What does that mean? That God, yeah, is going to save us. We're going to go home one day. Absolutely. Man, I look, look forward to that. It, we finally get to go home. But it's more than that. Hope of salvation is God, you're saving me right now from my fears. You're saving me right now from, from me going in a wrong direction. Lord, you're saving me right now. You're helping me right now. And if you just ask him, he's there for you. Again, I, want to, I wanted to get these in a different order. Um, look at this back up now. It's the breastplate of what? The breastplate of faith, of faith and love. What covers your vital organs is the breastplate. The breastplate of what? Of faith, of trust. Listen, the Bible says you got to walk by faith and not by sight. How can we learn to do that if we can always see the road? But when you look down, I mean, it's, it's been crazy. You don't, you don't know day by day what the next day holds. But I know who holds the next day, and I know I can trust in him. You turn on the news, and there's something new that's weird that's, that's happening. Um, you know, so this breastplate of faith, I'm going to have faith in God. I'm going to trust in him and notice this, Lord, give me more and more of this Lord, faith and what? And love and agape love, sold out love, trusting Jesus love. I'm going to love my neighbors. 
I'm going to love those that I, I've talked to people, my phone, I'm talking to a lot of people and I'm talking to people, I'm talking to pastors, you know, in the daytime that are, that are freaking out. I don't think I have a church anymore. You've got a big church right now. Online church is bigger than your church. More people are watching you online than was, than was going to your church. You no, no. Here's the thing. The church is not the building. You've heard us all say that over and over again. Now the church is really not the building. The church is the people. The church is the called out ones called into a family. The church is a family. So this love, not only love for, for the family of God, but the love for people that are hurting. The love. He says, for the helmet of salvation, for God has not, oh, I like this. God has not destined us for wrath but obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that little piece right there, on Wednesday night, I need to spend more time because I'm already out of time. Wednesday night, I want to talk about the wrath of God, going through the book of Revelation. Okay, so you will not see the wrath of God. This does not mean, and I need to, I'll have to spend 15, 20 minutes on this, is this, it does not mean you won't see the wrath of man. It doesn't mean you won't see the wrath of the devil. And we'll talk about that, all right? You will not see the wrath of God. That doesn't sound too, you know, too comforting right there, Pastor. Hey, God's wrath, I don't want no part of that. You're a child of God. You're his child. My grandkids, my kids, not so much, but my grandkids are never going to see my wrath, all right? Because they're my grandkids. They can do just about anything. In fact, if they do weird stuff, I'll help them, you know? Sure, you want to you wanna do that? Fine, I got lots of stories on that. But, but that's because, not because I love my grandkids more than my kids, because my kids see my wrath. It's because I'm personally a, I'm a little older and a little, I hope, wiser. And, and, you know, they're my grandkids. And so you're not going to see, so let me just say this, is that, that you are a child of God. You are his kids and grandkids. As much as I love my grandkids and my kids, this doesn't even compare to how much God loves you. And you're not going to see the wrath of God. And again, I'll develop that more on the Wednesday night because that, that takes a while to talk about. He says here, you're not destined for the wrath, but to obtain, to, to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is who he is. He died for us. So that whether we awake or sleep, whether we're alive or whether we've passed on, whether we've died, we might live with him. We're living with him now, and on that day we'll be living with him. Therefore, I love this, therefore encourage one another and build up one another. Build up each other as you are doing. Build each other up with this type of talk. What type of talk? This type of talk. God's in control. God is faithful. Now, in, in closing on this whole thing is this, and I'm going to pick it up again. We, did, we got through just one, I, don't, I think one verse in 1 Timothy. We'll pick it up again next time right there in, in, in 1 Timothy and we'll keep going. But here's the thing is this, is that right now is the time to make sure you know God. It's not about being religious. It's not about going to church. You ought to go to church and you ought to go to church online and you ought to, you ought to make sure you're watching this service because we'll spend time in the Word of God together. But you need to be in, in a place of, of knowing God. Do you really know Him? If you're not sure whether you, if you're religious, if you're religion, religious, great, good for you. Religion is not going to save you. If you're a good person, that's good. I'm glad you're a good person. Be a good person, but that's not going to save you. Only through a personal relationship with Jesus is what, you know, he said, come to me all you who are weak and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. All that would come to him, he said, I will never cast away. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God reaches out to you right now and in, 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 in all he's asking for you to do is to receive to as many as received him. To them he gave the right to become the children of God. And this is where it starts. Have you ever done this? Do you need to reaffirm this in your life? It's this, it's right here. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, I turn my life over to you. You don't need to know, I didn't know anything about God. I just knew that there was a hunger in me that I could not find outside of, of Jesus. I knew there was an emptiness in me that I could not fill through the drugs and the alcohol, through the, through the sexual stuff. I was doing all this stuff. I could not fill that emptiness or even good works and trying to be a good person. That wasn't filling that void. Only Jesus did. And it started with this, Jesus 
Come into my life, forgive me of my sins. To as many as received him, this is that well, to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become a children of, child of God. So have you received him? For some of you, do you need to do it again? You don't need to get born again again, but you need to get back on the right track. There's two tracks. One is the track of all that God's doing, and it's awesome, and God's faithful, but you've been on the other track of fear. You've been on the other track of of panicking in your heart and not trusting in God. Get off that track. Get on the track with Jesus. And sometimes you do need to say in a prayer, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Say it right now, right where you're at. Bow your head. Pause everything you're doing. Okay, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I turn my life over to you, all of my life. I turn over my fear to you. I turn over my inconsistencies to you. I turn over my, put it in your own words. What is he dealing with right now? I turn this over to you. Do it right now. I turn this over to you. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Help me to follow you. I will trust in you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God made it that simple to, again, as many as received him. Listen, if you said that prayer with us, we want to help you. Put it in the comment line. You can email us at, email me directly at pt at calvarysoc.org. pt at calvarysoc.org. Put it in the comment line. If you said that prayer, if we can send you, I'd love to send you a Bible and some material. We'd love to do that. We are in this together. Do not isolate yourself. That's dumb. Don't be dumb right now. No, don't isolate yourself. You need to be in the family of God. Lord, you're always, always, always faithful and we love you. So Lord, walk with us through the rest of this day, through the rest of this week. Walk with us through this life's journey and Lord, and help us to hear your voice. We love you, Jesus. Be with those that are are having a struggle right now, Lord. Be with your children, Lord. Lord, empower us to be lights to the world you've placed us in. Empower us, Lord, to do the things that you've called us to do. We love you, Jesus. We love you a lot in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now you can stay connected again. Stay connected, right? So this will be be re-aired again. Watch it again this evening. Watch this message again. And then tomorrow morning, Right? You'll have to apologize. It's, usually, it's in the morning when I do those, and I'm usually pretty flippant, but I, it, we still get the Word of God. And we'll be in the book of Matthew. Um, we're talking about, oh, we're talking on uh, Monday about uh, Matthew the tax collector. That's a pretty cool little, little story right there, so we'll be doing that. Uh, and then Wednesday night, Wednesday night at 7. Is that right? I think that's right. 7? Seven? 7? Something like that. Um, Watch online, we'll put a little thing. I think it's a seven. Then we'll be in the book of Revelation. Revelation, right? Is the end of the world gonna come? Yes, it is. And this is the battle plan. This is how it works out. So that's coming uh, this Wednesday night. So God bless you guys. If we can help you again, put in the comment lines or write us here at the church, go to our website. God bless you guys. God bless you guys.